Hello and welcome to our demonstration showing the integration between SpaceClam and ANSYS Workbench. We'll be focusing on the import of geometry, defeaturing models and creating parts in SpaceClam, then running our analysis and updating the model in ANSYS through our bidirectional associativity. We'll be looking at the freedom and many possibilities that will open up through the use of SpaceClam and ANSYS Workbench to start with, we'll get familiar with SpaceClaim's simple user interface. We have a small toolset laid out in a ribbon bar format, so there's easy access to all of the tools. Also, we'll be focusing on our four main tools that will allow you to do 95% of everything you need to in SpaceClaim. Pull, Move, Fill, and Combine will be highlighted throughout the demonstration. Now let's open up a model. In SpaceClaim, we can open up models from many different CAD packages in one environment. ProE, SolidWorks, Inventor, or standard formats like STEP, IGES, or Parasolid to name a few. Our model today is coming in from CATIA, so let's open that up and get to work. We've imported a small assembly of a suspension, but we're more interested with the brake caliper behind the tire to use in our analysis. To see it better, we can hide the tire in front or let's just hide the rest of the models too. In addition to running our analysis on the caliper, I'd also like to create brake pads to rest the caliper on to see how that will affect the result. One important thing to know about SpaceClaim is that I can sketch wherever I need to in order to create geometry. Now that we have our first basic sketch down, we can start to build a part from it simply by pulling it into a solid allows you to quickly stretch and form your model. You can dynamically pull on any face in real time, or even make precise ruler dimensions to create detailed parts. With options on the left side of the screen, and a set of tool guides on the right, you can quickly expand your tool set without going through sets of drop-down windows. We'll go through an angle in these walls slightly before adding some contour to the corners. Because in space claim, pull works on both surfaces and edges. Now to speed up the selection in space claim, we can use Power Select to automate the process. Power Select allows you to query through the geometry on the part to find like references to the selected object. Here you can see that we found all of the similar edges, so we can round them at the same time. After making the base for our brake pad, we'll need a boss to attach the pad onto the caliper. We can sketch again in order to add more detail to the part and go through and create both those bosses. So now that we have the start to our bosses, we can again go through and pull them up or down, or maybe we want to change our cylinder diameters and make them larger or smaller. Or we can quickly go through and snap them back to the height of our brake pad using our Up To tool guide to bring it right into place. We'll need to connect our bosses onto the base, so we'll just pull them into it and have SpaceClaim auto-boolean them together for us, turning our three solids into one. We should probably add some more contour to this, so let's go back into a section view, and it's a little easier to see if we clip it with the plane. And just by selecting on our line, we can go through and add a bend on there, and snap it against the caliper behind it. With the base nearly done, we'll still need to be able to mount the pad onto the caliper, so we'll need holes going through it. We've seen already how I can sketch on any surface, but I can also use surfaces to split the face of our model. Now we can see the areas that I've split, we can go just like before, pull them one way or the next, and create our holes going through the base. We'll still need to create the ceramic pads on top of it. So again, another alternative to sketching is to copy the lines on our model and offset them inwards, giving ourselves a new face that you can pull one way or the next and add some material to the model. And we can see that I have one solid, but you might want to split it up into different regions. And you can see in the structure tree as I split it, all the new solids that are generated. Now we can delete the areas we don't want, or use our tool Combine to combine geometry back together into one, leaving us with just two solids. 
but sometimes you split geometry and cut things in a different way that you don't want, leaving us with faces remaining. We can always just fill that back in to simplify the model and work in a forward-moving fashion without having to figure out a different way to make the change we want. And now we can soften up these sharp edges by adding in a round. One thing we want is to have two brake pads on the top of this. So we'll quickly generate a plane going through the middle of our part and combine that with the plane to split it up. Now we can go through and scroll through the model to pick on hidden faces quickly and separate them to get our three models remaining. And to see everything a little bit better, let's go through and change the colors of these models and apply some realistic color schemes to them using our Space Claim Display tab on the top of the screen. So it looks like we're ready to go. But after completing the brake pad, I've just learned that we have a new caliper prototype that development's been working on that they've sent me in from Parasolid. In Space Claim, we can work with designs from many environments, so I'll just replace the current caliper with our new one. As it comes in, I can see that there are a few things that are different between the two designs. But let's change the structure of the assembly, and we'll add our brake pad into the caliper that we brought in from Parasolid. And we can see that there's a few things different, and the part is see-through. And that's because if we look in the structure tree, it's a surface, and it didn't come in watertight. This can happen when getting in models from different systems, but let's fix it here. We can identify it by sight some of the areas that are open, but another way to do it is to go through and look at Power Select. We've seen it in action before, but it works for many different cases. Here we can use it to identify all of the problematic areas and fix them with one action and fill in all of those gaps. So now that we've healed the bad regions in the part, we should probably go through and save it as a space claim document to preserve our new geometry. So now that we have a solid, let's go through and defeature the model to remove things that probably won't affect the mesh. We'll start with this indented text. I'll just grab it all at once and fill it in with the geometry around it to defeature it. Phil's my best friend when I need to simplify the model. Next we can look at rounds on the model. I can select a chain of rounds to get rid of it by filling it in, or power select through the model and grab all of the smaller rounds. We probably wouldn't remove all the rounds on the model, but you can see how quickly and easily you can achieve this in space claim. Now looking at our brake pad with our new caliper, we can see that it doesn't exactly match. I can use move to allow me to translate or rotate geometry to a new position. And if I need to snap it into place, we'll just move it up to the hole beneath it. We can also do the same thing with components as well, moving entire components to a new location or copying it simply by holding down the control key, just like you copy files in Microsoft Windows. So now that we have our two new brake pads there, let's look at our caliper. And we've simplified the model from Parasolid, but let's build some intelligence into the model. In Space Claim, even though we received the model as a dumb solid, we can build parameters or name selections into a model and have them recognized in ANSYS. Here we can have Space Claim find all of the faces with the same offset. And then we can change the thickness to see how less material will affect the analysis. And there are many different parameters we can create and bring to ANSYS, like the overall height of the model. The important thing is that we can add them to a dumb model and add only the ones that are essential to us as analysts. In addition to adding parameters to the model, we can do the same with named selections. This is useful.